Hello, everyone from Ford City, Pennsylvania. This is Chuck King on Saturday, February 13, 2021, bringing you the Genesis study from Genesis chapter 27. I think one chapter is all we'll cover this morning. Chapter 27, verse 1. Now it came about when Isaac was old and his eyes were too dim to see, that he called his older son Esau and said to him, My son, and he said to him, Here I am. And Isaac said, Behold, now I am old, and I do not know the, the day of my death. Now please take your gear, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and prepare a savory dish for me such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat so that my soul may bless you before I die. Now remember that Isaac favored Esau and Rebekah favored, uh, favored uh, Jacob. And so we have, we have this division uh, of, of favoritism in the family. And uh, Isaac feels like he's, He's so old; he's going to die soon, and he he's um, he's yearning for some of that good game, wild game that Esau is able to provide for him in a good meal. As he calls it a savory dish that he loves. And so, uh, Rebecca, verse five, uh, Rebecca hears Isaac talk about blessing his son Esau, you know, that would be the blessing of the firstborn because Isaac's still thinking along those lines. Firstborn is Esau. He gets the blessing of the firstborn before I die. But Rebekah, verse 5, was listening while Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game to bring home, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Behold, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau, saying, Prepare me some game and prepare, or bring me some game and prepare a savory dish for me, that I may eat and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now, therefore, my son, listen to me as I command you. This is Rebekah talking to Jacob. Go now to the flock and bring me two choice young goats from there that I may prepare them as a savory dish for your father such as he loves then you you shall bring it to your father that he may eat so that he may bless you before his death so now Rebecca uh, is scheming with Jacob remember Jacob was the supplanter even grasping his brother's heel on the way out of uh, at their birth and so Rebecca and Jacob are in this scheme together because she knows she knows that God promised her that uh, Jacob would be the one who would be blessed and and not his brother Esau she had that prophetic word from the Lord. So now she's trying to see to it that it does come to pass. And she's trying to make it happen on her own strength and willpower to, to scheme to make, it, to make it come to pass. So she tells him to go and get a couple of choice young goats. And she's going to make uh, also a savory dish that... Uh, her husband loves and uh, then that way Jacob can receive the actual blessing of Isaac before he dies verse 11 Jacob answered his mother Rebekah behold Esau my brother is a hairy man and I am a smooth man Perhaps my father will feel me, then I will be as a deceiver in his sight or a mocker in his sight. And I will bring upon myself a curse and not a blessing. So 
this is a good point. Jacob brings up how uh, Isaac's almost blind. He can't see, but he can still feel. And he knows the feel of, of the differences in their arms if he would reach out and touch them. And so Jacob's concerned about getting a curse instead of a blessing. Verse 13, but his mother said to him, your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go and, and get them for me. So she's adamant to go forward with this plan. Verse 14, so he went and got them, meaning the two choice young goats, and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory food such as his father loved. So she knew what he liked to eat, and she made this meal from these two choice young goats. Verse 15, then Rebekah took the best garments of Esau, her elder son, which were with her in the house and put them on Jacob, her younger son. So she dresses them in Esau's clothing and she put the skins of the young goats, the ones that were just slaughtered for the meal, on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. So she, she uh, mimics the hairy body of Esau by putting the goat the goat skin uh, on Jacob. She also, verse 17, she also gave the savory food and the bread which she had made to her son Jacob. Verse 18, then he came to his father and said, my father. And he said, here I am. Who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, now here's, this is it. You know, he's he got the firstborn's birthright from his brother Esau by making it a, an oath or a deal with him over that meal that Esau gave up his birthright to him. That had already happened. So now he's telling his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. He's, he's confessing his first, firstborn birthright that he talked Esau out of for a bowl of lentil stew and some bread. I have done as you told me, he told Jacob. Get up, please sit and eat of my game that you may bless me. Now this is filled with deception and lies by both Rebekah and Jacob. And the only thing that we can conclude is that they they knew that God had spoken the blessing upon Jacob, and so they were going to make it happen one way or the other, even by deception. Verse 20, Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have it so quickly, my son? Meaning going out hunting, getting the, the kill the game, and then prepare it. And Jacob said, or he said, because the Lord your God caused it to happen to me. And so he's invoking the Lord as the, as the one who arranged this. Verse 21, then Isaac said to Jacob, please come close that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So he doubted it. He thought this was Jacob. So Jacob came close to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob. So Jacob couldn't even disguise his voice to sound like Esau. But the hands are the hands of Esau because he felt the goat hair. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother's Esau's hands. So he blessed him. So the goat hair on his, on his uh, smooth arms and chest that's what convinced Isaac that it, it was Esau and not Jacob. Verse 24, and he said, are you really my son Esau? He still had some doubts. And he said, I am. And he's speaking from the, the one who now has the firstborn's birthright because Esau gave it to him. So he said, bring it to me. 
and I will eat of my son's game that I may bless you. And he brought it to him and he ate, and he also brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, please come close and kiss me, my son. So he came close and kissed him, and when he smelled the smell of his garments, he blessed him and said, so everything that Rebekah had planned worked. The smell of Esau's garments that she put on Jacob, the hair, goat hair she put on his arms and chest, and the meal that she prepared for Isaac from the two young goats. So he blessed him and said, verse 27, See, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Now may God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and an abundance of grain and new wine. May peoples serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master of your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be those who curse you, and blessed be those who bless you. So this is a powerful blessing that comes from Isaac before he dies, and he feels like he's blessing his firstborn son, which technically he is because now uh, Jacob has that birthright. So he gives him the blessing. Verse 30. Now it came about, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had hardly gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. And he also made savory food and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that you may bless me. Isaac, his father, said to him, who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn Esau. So Esau comes fulfilling his father's request with the wild game ready to eat. And he truly is Esau. And he's, he's telling the truth here. But the father's shocked. Verse 33, then Isaac trembled violently and, and said, who was he then? that hunted game and brought it to me so that I ate of all of it before you came and blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. He knew that God's blessing was prophesied through him upon Jacob posing as Esau. He knew that. He had that, that prophetic anointing, and he knew that God had put a blessing on the one he blessed, which was Jacob and not Esau. Verse 34, when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me, even me also, O my father. So now he's in tears, in bitter tears, crying out for a blessing from his father, as well as the other blessing that was given to Jacob. And, and Esau doesn't doubt that the blessing would be on the one that was given that blessing by his father. It doesn't say he doubts that here. He, wants, he just wants a blessing of his own. And he said, your brother came deceitfully and has taken away your blessing. Then he said, is he not rightly named Jacob? This is, this is um, Esau speaking. Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me. The name means supplanter. These two times, he took away my birthright. Remember, for the bowl of lentil soup and bread. And behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved the blessing for me? So Esau recognized the day he gave up his birthright to Jacob, he blames him for supplanting it or deceiving him to get it. And also, as a separate thing, the blessing 
from his father of the firstborn. Verse 37, but Isaac replied to Esau, Behold, I have made him your master, and all his relatives I have given to him as servants, and with grain and new wine I have sustained him. Now as for you then, what can I do, my son? In other words, what blessing could, could even equal the one I just gave him? Verse 38, Esau said to his father, Do you only have one blessing, my father? Bless me. Even me also, O oh my father. So Esau lifted his voice and wept. So this is what, where the New Testament mentions this, that Esau uh, was a, an ungodly man and, and could find no place of repentance, even though he wept for it. So we learn from this situation that when you renounce the will of God for your life, the, the firstborn blessing was very valuable and God's blessing upon that firstborn. When you renounce that for a bowl of soup or a meal, then you have given up the most precious thing that you had and there's no way back from that. You cannot recover when you willfully turned away from the will of God for your life and renounced it. And this is a basically an example of apostasy, of someone who gave up God's plan and purpose for them for a meal. And now he, he is remorseful. He's weeping. He's crying out. He's sorry it all happened. But it's what 1 Corinthians 7 describes as worldly sorrow that brings death, not the godly sorrow that makes a way for repentance. And he could find that the scripture says that, that uh, in the New Testament that Esau could find no, no way of repenting. He couldn't find repentance. See, you don't repent because you want to. You repent, repent because of the kindness of the Lord that leads you to repentance. The grace of God, the mercy of God that leads you to repentance. And Esau was at a bad place here. He had renounced his birthright, really the plan of God for his life. And now he's very upset and blames Jacob for it all and is still seeking a blessing uh, another blessing from his father. And so he, this is the prophetic word that will come forth in verse 39 from Isaac for Esau. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fertility of the earth shall be your dwelling, and away from the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live, and your brother you shall serve, but it shall come about when you become restless that you will break his yoke from your neck. So there's a prophecy that God gave to Isaac for his son Esau that was fulfilled in Esau's history. Verse 41, so Esau bore a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning of my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. Now, isn't this prophetic word similar to what Cain received after he murdered his brother Abel? If you compare those two, they're similar in that Cain was driven away as a wanderer and now it's a similar prophecy for, for um, Esau. And, and he also has that murderous attitude of bitterness and a grudge toward his brother Jacob for what had, what had happened. And we know that this is the wisdom of the world, not the wisdom of God operating in Esau's life. Because the wisdom of God or the fruit of the Spirit in a person's life would allow 
mercy and forgiveness for the offend for the offender. Instead, the wisdom of the world wants to produce uh, violence and retribution and revenge, and that's what Esau is demonstrating. Remember, it's always by your fruit that you will be known. And here Esau had, a, had an opportunity to respond graciously, but he could not because of his flesh. So he responds according to the human nature, which is fallen and follows the wisdom of the world instead of the wisdom of God, which brings the fruit of the Spirit. Verse 42, now when the words of her elder, of her elder son Esau were reported to Rebekah, she sent and called her younger son Jacob and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau is consoling himself concerning you by planning to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. Now she says this again, like she did before about her instructions on getting the goats and deceiving her father, his father. Obey my voice and arise. Flee to Haran, to my brother Laban. Now you remember this place? This is where the servant of Isaac found Rebekah in the that 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 relative's uh, family, and Laban is uh, is Rebekah's brother. Verse forty four. Stay with him a few days until your brother's fury subsides, until your brother's anger against you subsides. And he forgets what you did to him. Then I will send and get you from there. Why should I be bereaved of both of you in one day? So we have what, what she says actually comes to pass over time that Esau, we're going to find out later on, much later on, he forgets about the pain of this experience and warmly receives his, his brother down the road when he when he is returning from Laban back to Canaan. Uh, and we know that happens in time, but not in a few days like Rebekah thinks it would take. So what happens? Verse 46, last verse, Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm tired of living because of the daughters of Heth. That would be Esau's wives. If Jacob takes a wife from the daughters of Heth like these, from the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? So she is trusting that like Isaac's servant found her to be the wife, Isaac's wife, that Jacob will go to her brother's family and also find a wife from that family line to instead of going to the tribal people like Esau did, and they they were they caused all kind of problems for Isaac and Rebekah. And that's where we are at the end of chapter 27. We have this, this wonderful story, history, of how Jacob deceived his father to give him the blessing of the firstborn son. He had already stolen, in a sense, the birthright from Esau over that meal. But now he wants the blessing. And his mother is the chief architect of this deception. So we have this work, all worked out here in chapter 27, where God, and God knows all this, this was his plan. He revealed this to Rebecca in the beginning, that, that, uh, uh, that, Jacob would be the blessed one. And so she's walking in this prophecy to fulfill it, even by deception and lies, to get the, the prophetic blessing to come upon her younger son, Jacob. And truly, God confirms all of this. As, as hard as it is to understand, God's will was for Jacob to be blessed over Esau, and all of this worked out so that the will of God came to pass because the prophetic blessing that came by the Spirit of God through Isaac indeed was given to Jacob. Let's pray. Father, we thank you 
that, that your ways are mysterious and beyond our understanding, but we see how you worked in the, in the lives of Jacob and Esau and Isaac and Rebekah. And we thank you that your plan is the only one we should be working toward. We should not be distracted by anything else in this life, but we should be looking for the will of the Father to be done. Help us, Lord, in these, in our new covenant through Jesus Christ in the church today to embrace your will every day, what you want to do in our lives and what your plan is for our eternity. So we say together with all the saints of God, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So there we are, some common studies from Genesis. I'm convinced that, that most people never take this kind of time to go over these simple scriptures. They, they've heard them before, yes. They know the stories, yes. But the Word of God is living and active. It's like a two-edged sword that really ministers to us. And our faith is increased by the Word of God. We are washed like as washed with water by the Word of God. And we need the Word of God as our, our weapon against evil in this world. So please share these teachings with, with uh, your friends list on Facebook and YouTube. And may the Lord bless and keep you. We'll see you tomorrow.